see all of you here today. Amen. To know the Lord is working in our lives. Amen. You know, we if, if you uh, focus on all the things that are on the news, the newspapers and on the internet, amen, it's easy to allow your mind and your heart to be overwhelmed. But you know, there's something about just spending a few moments in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can we just do that together right now? Lord Jesus, God, we come to, to you tonight, Lord God. We want to dwell in your presence. We want to enter into your gates with thanksgiving, Lord. We want to enter into your courts with praise. And Lord Jesus, I am thankful today for all of your blessings, for all of your mercies. Lord Jesus, that you have spared us, Lord, so far. But Lord Jesus, God, you didn't take us, Lord, when we were, we, were not, we were not ready. Lord Jesus, God, you've been merciful, Lord, to us, Lord. Give us a chance, God, an opportunity, Lord, not just to be saved, but to be used by you, Lord, to be used by you to reach other people that are where we were, oh God. I thank you today for your presence, Lord. I praise you today in Jesus' name, amen. If you have your phone, pull out your phone. Amen. And, uh, amen. Go to our church page and share the stream with your friends. Amen. You never know. Some words that are said in this service tonight could make the difference in someone's life. There's a lot of people that need, need Jesus in their life. Amen. More than just a passing experience, but they need to be baptized into Jesus. They need to be filled with Jesus. And I believe that what is going on here, I believe that God is going to impact people's lives forever. Amen. 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 Thank you for your faithfulness in giving. Those of you that are here that want to give, there's a box in the foyer. Those of you that want to give online, it's uh, springridgechurch.com forward slash give. And uh, we appreciate that. Glad to have Brother Taylor Fish and Sister Cindy Fish and and all the little fishes here today, amen. There's, there, the, the, the last time they were here, there were three. And this time there's four. Maybe you'll be back before there's five. Amen. We're glad to have them here today. We're looking forward to them being with us tonight, Saturday night, Sunday morning, and also the following Wednesday night. And, uh, you know, the Lord may just to cause someone to come into your life in the next week that is hungry for God and uh, even if we're not having service that night amen if they need prayer if they want to get baptized if they need a Bible study amen I encourage you to if the door opens walk through it amen and uh, engage them because the Lord can the Lord, the Lord can do something special I know that I've been praying and fasting I know that you have been praying and fasting and I just believe that the Lord is going to touch people's lives amen Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Uh, Sister Jennifer and Brother Nate and the rest are going to sing another song, and then Brother Fish is going to come and take his liberty. And uh, as he does that, can we just uh, we just raise our hands one more time? Lord Jesus, do what only you can do. God, I want to do all that I can do, but Lord, when I've done all that I can do, yes, Lord. Lord Jesus, I ask you to do what only you can do. In Jesus' name.
in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you. 
to the Lord right now. everybody in this room, close your eyes, lift your hands, and open up your mouth and begin to talk to the Lord right now. Something happens when we begin to bind together. We begin to bind together in worship. Let's just worship him right now. Why don't you just sing your own song to me? Lord, I love you. Lord, I glorify you. There is nobody like you, Lord. I thank you and I praise you, Jesus. Come on, let's take some time to touch the Lord right now. Let's take some time to talk to the Lord. God, I love you, Lord. I thank you, Jesus. I glorify your holy name in the name of Jesus. Let's clap our hands to the Lord right now. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. What an honor it is to be with you here tonight. I am very thankful to be here with my friend, Pastor Scott Phillips. I give honor to him and his great family. I want to tell you what, I could have just, I could have just listened to these guys lead worship all night. Something special about these guys. There's a, uh, there's a great anointing. You know, there's a few people that I sing with that every time I, I get to bind together, uh, with them in praise and worship. I've done I've done it for so long with them that uh, just something happens and I can tell that's exactly the case here with uh, with Sister Williams and also Brother Nate and, uh, and this uh, this family here and I just want to say what an honor it is to be here with you and uh, glad to have my wife and uh, and two kids with me and um, it's always a blessing to be here. But if you take your Bibles, we will quickly go to the book of Genesis. Uh, that's at the very front of your Bible. And the book of Genesis, the first page of your Bible, is what we'll be reading here tonight. Genesis chapter number 1. And uh, I will begin, uh, I will begin at uh, verse number 16. And... Um, Again, I give honor to Pastor Phillips and all the other ministry here today. Uh, Brother Williams, I give honor to him. And uh, I'm just looking forward to the next few services. I never, I never go anywhere uh, just to fill a calendar. I promise you, I, I really feel like God wants to do something here during this week. And he is. Yes, he um, is. I'll tell you uh, what. I'll tell you what. It's all going to depend on. What's gonna, uh, it's going to all depend on our response and how we go after God, how we worship, how we respond to the word, how we respond during worship. So I just want to challenge everybody to just get loose a little bit. Let's move your hands a little bit. Everybody, let's do that. And let's lift them up. Let's lift yeah. our hands up right now and begin to move them around. Let's lift our voice one more time to the Lord. Lord, we're here tonight, God. We're here tonight because I know, Lord, you're going to do something in this place. Tonight, you're going to help us. Tonight, you're going to grow us. You're going to make us better, Lord. In Jesus' name, now put them two hands together and begin to clap your hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter number 1, I'll read quickly. Genesis chapter number 1 and verse number 16 says, And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also, and God set them in the firmament of the heaven to give light upon the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to buy, and to divide the light from the darkness and God saw that it was good and the evening and the morning were the fourth day watch this verse number 20 says and God said let the waters bring forth somebody say that let the waters bring forth the abundantly the moving creature that hath life and the fowl that may fly above the earth in the open uh, the earth in the open firmament of heaven and God created great wells and every living creature that moveth uh, which the waters brought forth abundantly somebody say the waters brought forth 
after their kind and every winged fowl after his kind. And God saw that it was good and God blessed them, saying, Be fruitful and multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let fowl multiply on the earth in the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Verse 24, And God said, Let the earth bring forth. Somebody say, let the earth bring forth. Let the earth. let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing and beasts of the earth after his kind. And it was so, and God made the beasts of the earth after his kind and cattle after their kind and everything that creepeth upon the earth after his kind. And God saw that it was good. And then in Genesis chapter number 2 and verse number 1, it says, Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Somebody said it was finished. And all the hosts of them, and on the seventh day God ended his work which he had made, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Verse number seven. Verse number seven says, And the Lord God formed man out of the dust of the earth and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Tonight, my subject to you is simply this, a sustaining atmosphere, a sustaining atmosphere. Let's lift our hands one more time and talk to the Lord. Let's create something in this place. God, I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do. I pray, God, that you would move in a mighty way. There is no one like you. There is none beside you, Lord, and I'm thankful, God, Lord, to be here with your people tonight. I pray, God, that you would move in a mighty way, that you would help us, that you would grow us. In Jesus' name, let's clap our hands to the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the Lord, and you can be seated across the room, a sustaining atmosphere. Come to preach to this church tonight and tell you something that many of us already know, but I want to tell you sometimes we've got to go back to the basics and visit the basics, and I want to tell somebody tonight that atmospheres matter. Atmospheres matter. Look at your neighbor and say atmospheres matter. Atmospheres are very, very important in the world of space travel. We have learned to go beyond Earth's atmosphere into an endless, airless realm of stars, planets, and galaxies. The only way that this feat is possible is that we, as human beings, have learned to take our atmosphere with us. And that is the only way that our astronauts can be sustained or that they can live in this outer space. Science says that a man in outer space, unprotected, would most likely only survive for about 90 seconds. But because, because in that shuttle, in that spaceship or that space shuttle, because they've learned how to regulate the atmosphere, because uh, they're able to take oxygen with them, uh, and they're able to make, and they're able to take the atmosphere with them, they can uh, live and they can be uh, sustained. It wouldn't be uh, it wouldn't be much at all. It wouldn't be good at all if we just sent the, uh, sent the astronauts to space, if they could only live uh, for 90 seconds. That's not uh, that's not much of a feat at all to go to the moon, but can't even make it quite to the moon because uh, you can only live there 90 th for 90 seconds. I want to tell you, atmospheres sustain things. Uh, if the atmosphere is right, uh, I can see as uh, I can see as uh, as the. Uh, the Navy or uh, as them divers will dive deep down uh, into the depths of the sea, uh, deep down into the depths of the sea, uh, uh, and they would go inside of these, uh, uh, they would go inside of these submarines that could go deep, deep down uh, under the sea. If, 
It wasn't for that if they were just there by themselves. Uh, thousands and thousands of feet under the water. They could not uh, they could not take the pressure, but their body would explode or really implode. But because uh, of the right atmosphere and because of that submarine uh, that it had been created and it had been uh, prepared, uh, it would be uh, that people are able to go deep down uh, into the depths of the sea. Uh, I can see that baby that has just uh, been born early who is seemingly struggling for his or her life. The doctor will take the baby and place that baby in an incubator. All of a sudden, the newborn is in an atmosphere that will sustain it uh, and will regulate body temperature. Uh, uh, and inside of the incubator, uh, this incubator Incubator will tune out noise to allow sleep and to allow rest. It will prevent uh, other complications and shield uh, this newborn baby uh, from sickness and uh, from harm. Uh, I've come to preach to somebody tonight and tell you, uh, I want to remind you of the fact that atmospheres matter. Uh, the right atmospheres bring life uh, and the wrong atmospheres bring death. Uh, the right atmospheres bring growth uh, but the wrong atmosphere cause things to wither away. You don't grow gardens in the closet. You don't grow gardens in the closet. It doesn't work too well. But I've been out. I remember as a kid, I'd walk out into them, them watermelon patches in Sugartown, Louisiana. Every summer, I would go and help pick watermelons with my grandfather. It didn't seem like there was a whole lot there. Just watermelon as far as you can see but because because of the sunlight and because of the rain because of everything that was there there were watermelons that could grow as big as you could even you could ever even dream of I, they had, I remember stories of them bringing 100 pound watermelons out of them fields how did something grow to be that massive how did something grow uh, to be that big. Well, they had prepared the ground and uh, they had prepared the place. Uh, the atmosphere was right. Everything that was needed uh, was there. I come to tell you, atmospheres matter. Uh, atmospheres matter in the world. Uh, in the world uh, uh, of, of life and, uh, and health and farming and all these things. Uh, but I want to tell you, uh, atmospheres also matter uh, in the church. Atmospheres matter in our church. I come to preach to somebody and tell you, it's we every time we come to church, we ought to sit, we ought to do everything that we can to create an atmosphere in this place. Because I'll tell you, if the atmosphere is right in this room, any miracle that you need can come into your world. If the atmosphere is right, hey, let me tell you, atmospheres don't just show up. But atmospheres take prayer. And atmospheres take work. And atmospheres take sacrifice. And I come to preach to somebody in this building. And I come to tell you it's not the will of God. Oh, that we just have the same atmosphere all the time. But there comes a time that we got to say, all right, Lord, there's something special that you want to do here. There's something different that you want to do here. And I'm willing to till the ground. I'm willing to prepare the atmosphere. I'm, I'm willing to create that space capsule that will take us somewhere that we've never been before. I want to preach to somebody in this room and tell you atmospheres matter. That's why you see me walking around this front and I'm moving my hands and I'm opening my mouth and I'm and I'm worshiping God. What am I doing? I'm not trying to be seen. I'm not trying to be crazy. But what I am trying to do is create something. I'm trying to stir something up. Oh, Paul told Timothy to stir up the gift that was within him. Every now and then, when the fire's not burning, you gotta reach in and you gotta say, all right, God. Something's got to be stirred up here. Something's got, I've got to work on this. 
I want to tell you, we better never stop working on our atmosphere. When we stop working on our atmosphere and we stop caring about our atmosphere, we are a dying church. But when we keep working on our atmosphere, we can be a growing church. When we keep working on our atmosphere, we can have thriving ministries. I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. And I've come to tell somebody that God is waiting on somebody in this room right now in this place to stand on your feet and say, God, I'm about to change some things in my walk with God. I'm not going to depend on anybody else, but I'm going to learn what it means to contribute to the atmosphere. I want to tell you, we all know what it's like. Yeah. To drive home and say, well, something was missing that, sir. That's right. That's right. And you know, I guarantee you it wasn't the singing. It wasn't the preaching. It wasn't the pointing. It wasn't the beautiful church. I'm going to tell you, we grew up here. I told my wife, I said, I'm telling you, it's one of the prettiest churches. Sitting on a hill. God set you on a hill. But I want to tell you, it don't matter how pretty it is driving up or how, how beautiful the trim is. Uh, we got to build an atmosphere in this place uh, so when somebody walks in this place uh, that's broken and busted and uh, their life is all messed up uh, that they can walk into an atmosphere that's ready for a miracle. Uh, they can walk into an atmosphere that's ready for something in their world. I'm going to tell you something happens when you make up your mind. I'm going to contribute to, to the atmosphere of everybody in this room. Uh, if everybody in this room would make up their mind, I'm going to give something to God tonight. I'm, going to, I'm not just talking about the offering, uh, but I'm talking about I'm going to give some energy. Uh, I'm going to give some time. I'm going to give some worship. Uh, I'm going to give some voice. Uh, I'm going to give some hand movement. Uh, I'm going to move my feet. Uh, I'm going to do something for God that I normally don't do. I'm going to tell you what you're going to be doing. Huh? You're going to be like that angel huh? that came down to the pool every year huh? and started stirring something up. Huh? Let me tell you, God don't need an angel huh? to stir something up. Huh? We can stir something up huh? in this place. Huh? If we let the our mind, God, huh? I'm going to do something that's not normal huh? and I'm going to step out from beyond myself. Huh? What would happen huh? if praise and worship became normal? What would happen in this place uh, if all uh, not worrying about somebody next to us became normal? Uh, what would happen uh, if preparing the atmosphere uh, became normal? I want to tell you, uh, I know what would happen. Uh, oh, it was uh, God told Joshua, uh, prepare today uh, because I'm doing miracles tomorrow. Uh, if we will prepare, uh, God will do something uh, in our world. We know it's like to have that off service. But it wasn't the preaching missing. It wasn't the church missing. It wasn't the screens missing. It wasn't the lights missing. I'll tell you what was missing that day. The response. If we'll have a response, every service will never have an off service. I want to tell you, I've been places where I could preach my way out of a wet paper sack. I couldn't preach my way out of, out of wet cotton candy. But something happened when the people of God begin to lift their hands and they begin to lift their voice and when they didn't realize oh, as if they were stirring God's heavenly pot and they were saying we're about to there's about to be something poured out upon this church that we've never seen before I come to tell you atmospheres matter they matter in our church they matter in our home I got to tell somebody tonight, uh, we, we can they say we're called to ministry all day long, uh, but if we go home and have a bunch of puke in our house, uh, we're not going to be able, uh, we're not going to be able to sustain uh, a ministry. Uh, we've got to have, uh, we've got to have an atmosphere uh, in our church uh, and at our home uh, and in the prayer closet uh, that will cause that ministry uh, and that calling that God has placed on the inside of us. Uh, that purpose that he's given uh, each and every one of us uh, to live, uh, to live. Uh, we know what it's like uh, to feel, uh, feel that 
urge of the Holy Ghost at an altar on a Sunday and come Monday or Tuesday we're so beat down we don't even know if we want to live for God or not you know what we need to do we need to get home and we need to create an atmosphere because your atmosphere is either draining you or it's building you. And I can't afford to have an atmosphere full of leeches in my own house. I've got to create something that will allow something to live. In my world, I come to preach to somebody and tell you our God is a creator. Do we believe that? He's a creator. He's such a creator. He can do something that we've never seen before. He's such a creator. He can reach down. I know you're looking and say, well, God's done this for me. And a lot of times when it comes to our faith, our faith is based off what we've seen him do. But God doesn't have to do the same thing twice. He has the ability to do something completely new, completely different every single time. Why? Because he is the sole creator. Paul writes, there hath no temptation taken you that such is common to man. What was he saying? He says, the devil cannot create anything. Everything, every temptation that comes to you, it's already came to somebody else. The devil's not a creator. He cannot create. All he can do is repeat. But God, when he decides to do something, he can do it his own way, a way that nobody else has ever seen it before. That's what I'm ready for in my world. And that's what I'm ready for in this church here today. I come to tell you, God can come down into your world and do something that's never been done. Such a revival can break out here that it can break, that it would be displayed on the news. I know some of you say that's crazy, but I want to tell you, he's a creator, and he can do in this church what's never been done before, if the atmosphere is where it needs to be. I'll prove it to you. The Bible says, and God said, let the waters bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life. Before... God created the sea creature. Before God created the fish of the sea, he first created the atmosphere. It was atmosphere before it was creation. It was atmosphere before there was life. And this is just the way the Lord does it. The Bible says uh, that for the first half uh, of Genesis chapter number one, uh, that God is working on the atmosphere. And, uh, he's putting water and he's bringing up the land and uh, he, he's putting air and uh, he's making the ferment. And, uh, he's putting day and he's putting night. Uh, and when all that's there and the water's there and everything's there uh, and there's oxygen in the water uh, and everything that a fish would need to breathe, uh, God says, all right, the atmosphere is where it needs to be. Now it's time to create. He did not create fish and just let them float around, let them float around in the air. And they said, all right, now it's a good time to create water. No, he created the atmosphere and not just a atmosphere, but an atmosphere that would sustain the life that was sent there. So that's why the Bible says that after he creates the water, and after he creates he creates the atmosphere the Lord doesn't even necessarily start creating fish but he looks at the water and he tells the water bring forth abundantly the moving creature that hath life what, what am I saying I'm saying God gave the atmosphere the power to bring forth something it was the water it was the water that began to bring forth. It was the water that be began to bring forth life. The fish and the creatures of the sea were created.
created and placed into a sea that was ready for them. The sea was the atmosphere that would sustain them. The scripture tells us again in Genesis 1 and 24, and God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature after his kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beast of the earth. What happened? God looked at the earth. He said, all right, earth, you're ready. All right, earth, you're where you need to be. It's time for you to bring something forth. And all of a sudden, something started coming out of the earth. And God gave that atmosphere the ability to produce something. Birds were created and began to fly in the air that was ready for their wings to fly in. The Bible says again in Genesis 2 and 1, thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Everything was ready. Everything was created. And the Bible said that God reaches down into the dust of the earth. He reaches down into an earth that's ready. He reaches down into an atmosphere that will sustain it. And the Bible said that God formed man of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. The atmosphere that man needed to sustain him was created before God created man. That's how God works. God is atmosphere first. God is get the atmosphere right, and I'll give you anything that you need. Get the atmosphere where it needs to be, and I'll produce anything that you need in your world. Oh, he looks at the water and says, oh, if I can get the water right, if the water's right, there's going to be things that come out of that that nobody's even seen before. Nobody had even heard of fish. Nobody had, because there was nobody. Nobody had ever heard of fish or great whales or all these other things. But I want to tell you, when the atmosphere was right, God began to do things that had never been done before. I don't know about you, but I like it. I like it whenever Samuel, Samuel began to tell Eli what God told him. He said, the Lord's about to do a new thing in Israel. I got to preach to you and tell you, the only way you get a new thing is if you get the atmosphere where it needs to be. The only way that you get a new thing is if you make up your mind, there's something that's about to be created here. I wish somebody in this place would say, oh God, there's some things that I need in my world. But you know what? I got to prepare the way before it comes. Hey, you got pain in your body? A miracle can happen in your world. But you know what you got to have first? I'll tell you what you got to have first. You got to contribute to the atmosphere. I wish somebody would lift up your hands and say, God, I'm going to prepare a little bit in this house right now. And I'm going to make the first move. Yes. Yes, Lord. Come on now. I'm going to make sure there's some things in my world that's where, they're, where they need to be so that I'm able to receive something in my life. God says, I'll give you a miracle tonight, but I'm not sure if you can sustain it. Why does God bless some people and don't bless others? I want to tell you, oh, sometimes he looks at folks and says, well, if I bless them, if I bless them like, like this, they can't handle it. Oh, I want to tell you, I don't want the Lord to look over me and say they can't handle a blessing because I'm not prepared and my atmosphere is not prepared. But if somebody in this place would say, oh, God, I'm going to focus on atmosphere. I'm going to go home and I'm going to clean house and I'm I'm going to get sin out of my house. And I'm going to get sin out of my world. And I'm going to get sin out of my relationships. You know what happens when you begin to get that? Whenever you begin to get that atmosphere right, all of a sudden the creator stands 
up and he walks to the edge of time and he looks at us he says all right what am I about to do in their world wait a minute a miracle can live there wait a minute a blessing can live there wait a minute a ministry can live there a calling and an anointing can live there oh I want to tell you God is tired of giving Give it to some and it lasted a night. We don't serve a God of one night stands. I'm going to tell you our God is saying, create the atmosphere. Oh, can you house a miracle? That's the question. Can you house a miracle tonight? Are you ready? Are you ready to house a miracle? Oh, I know I'm giving these cameraman's fits. I'm going to stand still here tonight. But i got to preach to somebody. There's somebody watching here tonight. You're in your house. You're at home. You might as well go ahead and start cleaning house tonight. Why? Because we got to get the atmosphere right. Because when we do, the creator will stand up in our life. Hey, I want to tell you, we all want signs, wonders, and miracles. We all want gifts and callings and anointing. We all want great revival and great harvest. But God's asking us tonight, where is the atmosphere? When the atmosphere gets right, I'm going to send you something that you've never had before. When the atmosphere is right, the creation follows. Many times what we're lacking in our lives has nothing to do with what God won't supply, but everything to do with an atmosphere that won't sustain. God, will you supply it? God says, will you sustain it? God, will you supply it? God said, you can't sustain it. Real growth happens in the right atmosphere. We must create an atmosphere. Oh, I want to tell you, something happened when Ezekiel went to, went before a valley of dry bones. God saying, speak. And he says, all right, before he even says anything to the bones. Oh, the Bible says he begins to speak to the north, the south, the east. In the west, wind begins to blow. What happens? Yet he began to create an atmosphere. And when the atmosphere was white, there was a valley of dry bones that began to stand up in that place. Somebody's got to speak to the north. Somebody's got to speak to the south, the east, to the west in your world. And say, oh God, there's a lot of broken things, but I'm about to prepare an atmosphere. Oh, there's a lot of broken things in my world, but I'm about to create an atmosphere. Oh, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter number 6 that the train of his robe filled the temple. Oh, and the angels begin to cry, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And all of a sudden something happens. Angels begin to lift their voice. And all of a sudden the post of the door begins to move. And the whole house is filled with smoke. What was that smoke? smoke. That was the glory of God. How did it come? It came from the voice of an angel without a testimony. An angel that had never been baptized in the name of Jesus. An angel that had never never had anything, never been washed in the blood. That had never spoke in tongues. Oh, I want to tell you, if smoke can fill a room because of an angel without a testimony, what can happen if us, the people of God, with a testimony... Oh, people. Hey, there's people that used to be hooked on drugs in this room. But the Lord brought you out. Something happens when you lift your voice. And you begin to say, oh, he's been so good to me. Something happens in your life when you stand up and you say, if it hadn't been for the Lord that was on my side, I'd be in a place somewhere. I'd be messed up somewhere. It was dry. 
so dry, everybody just sat down. The Bible said they were all sitting. And they began to pray. They began to pray. The Bible says when the day of Pentecost was fully come. They were all in one accord in one place. They're sitting down and they're praying. They said, I know Jesus told us to come here. There's a promise, but we don't see no promise in this dusty room here tonight. And they just say, you know what, let's pray. And 120 of them begin to pray. And all of a sudden, there's, the word says that there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. What is that? Atmosphere. All of a sudden, something had started happening in the atmosphere. It said it filled all the house where they, they were sitting. And it appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and it set upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave the utterance what am I telling you I'm telling you in every great miracle some kind of there was some kind of atmosphere change something happened something happened whether whether it was a blind Bartimaeus screaming out unto the Lord when he passed by whether it was a woman with an issue of blood that says I can't stay still in this house anymore, huh? but I've got to change something in my world. Huh? There's somebody that I'm preaching to. Huh? you got to get tired of where you're at, and you got to make up your mind. Huh? Something's about to change, huh? and it's, I'm not going to wait on God to do it. Huh? I'm going to touch him. Huh? I'm going to change something. Somebody stand on your feet and lift your hands to the Lord right now, huh? and begin to let your voice out. Huh? Something's 